finally in the new arcade. Can you believe it? What a hell of a journey it was getting here, though, guys. I'll tell you that now. Unbelievable. Ah, and as you can see, I've broken my arm. Yes, broken my arm. My poor partner. Slip disc. Ah, oh, guys, honestly, don't move. Honestly, just stay put. It's not worth it. Well, it is worth it. This whole thing was worth it. I hope it was worth it. I hope I'm worthy now. I've broken my arm to live in this house. Um, because we absolutely love it. I absolutely love this place. And this arcade is a lot bigger than I ever dreamed it would ever be. Nine cabs in a row, guys. And if you can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cabs, guys. Whoa. <clears throat> nine cabs in a row. And room from this side as well, obviously. Nice little console set up down the end. But obviously, needs lots of work. Um, got to get all the plug sockets in here above the cabs. Got to insulate it. Then clad it with probably timber, scaffold boards, second-hand scaffold boards. And do the same with the floor as well. So it gives it a nice log cabin feel, a nice warm feel about it. But it's a beautiful space, a fantastic space. I can get cabs on either side of the room and have enough room for people to mingle as well if I ever want to have a meeting people over, which I normally do. But guys, oh, what journey getting here, honestly, breaking this arm on Wednesday. Oh, and you don't know how many takes it's taken me to do this video. I really, I really wanted to do a video like all the cabs switched on, all out there wrapping, all lit up nicely, but it just ain't gonna happen now for a, for a while because um, I just can't unwrap them with one hand. Um, but you know, this is part of the journey. I hope you're gonna join me, all my subs that have stuck with me for so long. I hope you're gonna join me uh, in doing this place up. Give me some ideas as I'm doing it up um, and turning these cabs on, which I will do in the next video. But for now, I just wanna update you where I'm at. Um, guys, it's been one hell of a journey, it honestly has. So, I mean, we got four, four Luton vans, which I hired a Luton. Got four Luton vans, and I pretty much moved all the stuff into the house. Um, me and my brother and my mum helped, so big thanks to my brother and my mum. And I've got to thank Paul uh, Buller for helping me as well. He really helped at like one o'clock in the morning, moving cabs from the old house. Um, and we still didn't we still didn't have enough time to go back and get the last bit of garden stuff. You know what's always left that all the garden stuff you don't want, you really want to just chuck and skip or leave. Um, but we had to go back the next morning and pick it up and, and the new owners had got there, which was a little bit embarrassing. But we got it all out. So I've got to say, say a huge thanks to Paul and Dave Alton. Dave Alton helped as well and lent me his sack truck. So yeah, big thanks to you guys and my family. And of course, my partner has been absolutely unbelievable. Um, unfortunately, uh, she slipped a disc. Um, so I've been kind of caring for her over the last couple of weeks, um, which has been difficult. It really has been difficult, because for, especially for her, you know, you've got this enthusiasm, new house of your dreams. You just want to get out there and start, you know, doing stuff on the house and putting your, your mark on it. Um, and for me, you know, it's been difficult as well because we just, you know, we just want to get everything settled, all the stuff out of the boxes, and it's been so difficult. And then uh, on Wednesday, God, uh, guys, I said to her, you have the bed and I'll sleep down here because she's tossing and turning and I think she needs as much space as she can in the bed as possible. So I said, I'll sleep down here, to give her a bit of space. So I put a bed out here. I've got my CRT set up over there. And I thought, I'll, I'll get the Mega Drive out, but the Mega Drive is above here, above this floor, um, which is great for storage. So all my console stuff right now is above here. So all I've got in this room is my arcade stuff for now. I'm not gonna get any of the console stuff out um, until all this is done. But I just thought I'd get, the, I'd get a Super Nintendo or the Mega Drive out, and so I've got something to play in here. So I've got a, a step ladder, which goes up to a little hatch above here. 
um, which is not ideal, and I knew it wasn't ideal. What you really need is a two-sectional ladder that just goes straight up and not an A-frame ladder, because um, you're putting pressure on the ladder the wrong way. But I thought, oh, I'd be careful, I'll be all right. You know, I go up ladders quite a lot, guys. You know, I'm a builder, so... Um, but I knew this ladder was dodgy, and it, the ground was uneven as well. Got the Mega Drive out, got a few steps down the ladder, and you have to put your legs out of the hatch blind to feel where the ladder is. We've all done it. Get your feet on the ladder and then put two steps down. Got out of the ladder and the whole thing just went. And I went the opposite way. Landed on the floor. And straight away, you don't realise what's happened. I went to get up. I thought, oh, that's weird. I looked behind me and my arm... My arm was the opposite way. It was facing the opposite way. So I'd landed on my arm and it was gone. It's folded up behind me. And I panicked. And then I wrenched my body round and pulled my arm round. And it came round and it really felt strange, guys. It literally came round like a, like a puppet's arm. <laughs> Big, floppy, he I mean, really heavy. <sighs> Because I'm not pulling it with my own muscles. I literally pulled it with my body and the thing came round and hit me over the face. And it just flopped down in front of me. I thought, fucking hell, it's broken. I knew straight away it was broken. And it made me feel faint. It made me feel a little bit sick. And I'm laying there and I thought, I can't get up. I just couldn't get up. And I'm down the end of the garden. My partner's in the house with her mother. I could be laying there for hours. If I don't get up. So I managed to sit up, grab my arm from behind me, pull it round, and as I'm doing that, I can feel the bones crunching. Horrible, horrible feeling, guys. Pulling your arm round. And the weirdest thing is, you can move your hand, your fingers, but you've got no control over your arm at all. But as soon as I'd see my fingers moving, I thought, oh, that's a good sign. I'm not paralysed anyway. The next step was for me to get up. So I managed to get up, lift my arm up and carry it back to the house. But I couldn't open the back door. By that time, I'm sweating buckets. I can feel I'm getting lightheaded, lightheaded and very faint because it's just dawned on me then. Um, the adrenaline setting in not really feeling much pain at this point i'm just shocked i'm in shock i'm in a state of shock so i'm shouting trying to get my partner's attention i've broken my arm i've broken my arm i'm shouting and i'm banging on the door with my feet because i'm holding this arm with this hand this arm this hand and no one can hear me Ugh. then i'm really starting to panic um so i'll go up to the window and start headbutting <laughs> Headbutt in the front window, shouting, I've broken my arm, I've broken my arm. <laughs> what else could I do, guys? Shouting help as well. Finally, they come out and they're just, they're in bits. And, I, 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 you know, I felt angry. I felt stupid. And I felt uh, a bit of a disappointment, really, because I'm here to, to look after my partner and make sure she's all right. And I've basically fuck, my, fuck myself up really doing something really stupid and I should have known better so no sympathy guys I'm not looking for any sympathy I'm just telling you how it is what I was feeling um, shocked angry um, and realizing at that point she, I could see her getting just really stressed out she was really stressed out and at that point I realized I've only got a broken arm I've just got a broken arm I'll go into hospital, I'll spend the night there and they'll chuck me out, you know, and I'll be absolutely fine. And that's what I kept telling her. I said, look, don't worry about it. It's fine. It looks horrible, but I'll be absolutely fine. And that's what I kept telling myself in my head. It's just a broken arm, which it is. Yes, it's painful, but it could have been a lot worse, guys. A bone could have been sticking out. Um, I could have hit my head and been unconscious, knocked out. Or I could have hit the base of my spine and, and been paralysed because I've had friends that have had that. So the fact that I managed to get myself and my arm down to the garden and, and, and the back door and cry for help and get my partner's attention and her call the ambulance was a sign for me that actually I'm not as bad as what I think it 
it is. But it was, it is bad. I mean, it's a nice clean break right across this part of the arm, in between my elbow and my shoulder, whatever part of the arm that is. They never told me in the hospital. They don't. <laughs> they don't tell you anything really, um, which I'll get into in a bit. But guys, honestly, waited an hour for the ambulance. One hour. Now, I know we're in the middle of a pandemic, but there's also people that are suffering and dying through not being looked after but because of this bloody pandemic, which I find unbelievable, really, and, and wrong. Um, and that's that's a fact. And I was, I was disappointed, actually, that they took so long to get here. And really, the, the lack of... Uh, compassion that I had in the hospital I didn't think it was that great to be honest with you and it was empty you know there was probably two people in front of me um, <clears throat> one guy had sunburn when I got to the hospital sunburn on his on his thing actually he came in after me so there's one person in front of me then a young guy in his late 20s came in and he had sunburn and blisters and he just walked straight in in front of me and I thought you're having a laugh I'm sitting there on a seat, I've been drugged up, I've got loads of morphine, I've had loads of gas. They haven't given me a sling, the ambulance guys, which I asked for, because I'm still holding my arm with this on, which is then getting pins and needles, really bad pins and needles in this, ha this hand from holding this heavy weight. And then my top's coming off because they cut through my t-shirt and that's fallen on the floor. So I'm sitting in the waiting room, bare top with a broken arm, and this bloke's just walked in with sunburn. In his late 20s, it's unbelievable what people go into hospital with. Unbelievable. Anyway, finally got seen um, and had the x-ray. And then obviously it showed up. And I'll show you here. You can see the break. It's pretty bad, guys. Pretty bad break. Nice clean cut, though. They say a clean cut. Um, heals better. I don't know. I'm no expert. I've broken toes before. I've broken my ribs before. And I've broken my little this finger before, and I've broken a collarbone before, but I've never broken a bone this big before. Um, but I knew it was broken, you know, through experiences of having broken stuff before. I know what the feeling was like, that crunchy feeling of your bones grinding together, and the feeling, especially had when I broke my toe, um, you've got no control over it. You know, it's just completely does what it wants to do. And it's, you can literally move it around like putty and it will just stay there. It's really, really weird. But this felt like that, but 10 times worse. It really did. Um, so then finally got to see a doctor, guys, honestly. Um, and he gave me two options. He gave me two options. He said, we can either pin it, which basically means surgery. And we've got to pin through the arm brace it together, put it together, clamp it together so it fuses um, a lot better, a lot quicker probably. Or you can, or we can, um, line it up the best we can, put your arm in a sling and it will fuse naturally on its own, um, given time um, and, you know, plenty of space, don't, don't touch it. Uh, now, Given the treatment I've already had was a little bit slapdash, a little bit part-time, if you ask me. I've just felt like part-timers in there. Um, I, I went with the just sort of, yeah, just put it in a sling and get it together as much as you can. He said, okay, we'll do that, but it's going to be extremely painful. Okay, I'm glad you tell me that at the end. <laughs> so, okay, so what, what, do you want, what do you want me to do? He said, well, okay, we'll just, just breathe on that, just take loads of gas. So the nurse this side, doctor that side, I'm just taking loads of gas, really deeply, really deeply, and then suddenly I'm feeling really lightheaded, and my head's just gone, and I'm all over the place, sitting on the edge of the bed. And then suddenly, the doctor's got this arm, and he's moving it around, up and down, round and round, until, and I can feel the crunches, you can feel it vibrating through your body, you can hear it crunching, until he kind of feels like he's got it, Together, I guess it's a bit like, you know, when you break a, um, a cocktail stick, you know, and it's kind of splintered at the ends, isn't it? You ever try putting that back together? 
you know, it's, I imagine it's a little bit like, or a little bit like, you know, your action figures, your 80s action figures, you know, your WrestleManias, um, <laughs> you know, your action men. Have you ever tried putting an arm back on? <laughs> it was basically like that. That's what he was doing. And he basically just said to me, well, we'll give that a go. And I just looked at him like, give that a go. <laughs> give that a go, that's my arm you're talking about. So, no, no, he said, um, we're going to we're gonna take you down to have another x-ray. So what they have to do is they take you down to the x-ray room, x-ray it, and see if he's got it in the right position. He didn't. He didn't have it in the right position. So I had to come back, more gas and air, more fiddling about my arm, more mucking about, moving about. Um, at this point, I'm so high, I'm saying to him, just do whatever you've got to do to get it right, because I ain't fucking going through this again. And I'm definitely not turning my back and going down the fucking um, pinning my arm route. We've gone this far, let's do it right. Went backwards and forwards four times, guys. Four times to that x-ray room. Till he got it right. Talk about part-timers. <laughs> Unbelievable. It really was. That was the most agonising thing. And the weirdest thing. I wouldn't say it was the most painfulest thing, because I've had some painful shit done to me, which I won't go into. You don't want to know what I've had done in the past. But it was weird. It really is weird. The weirdest thing about this arm, right, is you can move your fingers. I can move my hand backwards and forwards. Now, if I was to just drop this arm like this, it moves forward. Now, if I didn't have this strap, it would go out like that, like a water divider. That's what it would do. And it happened this morning when I got out of bed. I forgot, because you're half asleep, that you've got a broken arm. I got out of bed and the thing just swam right around the opposite way. It's not nice, guys. It's not nice. Then you start to worry, because you've got to go back. I've got to go back to the hospital in a week to make sure it's fusing, so it's still lined up. I can't see it is. So I probably will end up having it, for, after all this, I'll probably end up having it fucking... Um, pinned anyway so there you go that was my so I'm in the hospital till like fucking five o'clock in the morning five o'clock in the morning they said oh you're ready to go we're done with you now I thought that is that it no plaster nothing just a sling guys that's all I've got and it's quite a major break you know it's quite a big break so send me back in the cab now I'll drive back in the cab and I thought who's gonna be up at fucking half five in the morning I've got my keys, but you know, I've got to find cash for the cab driver. I've got to get in my van. Just thought, you know, don't need all that, luckily. And the reception, we've still got no internet in this house, still got no um, reception at all. So it's a nightmare for my partner to pick up the phone, hear the phone. Um, luckily she did, I told her I'm on my way home. And she was there to greet me with a lovely bacon sandwich and a drink and a cigarette. <laughs> You can't have one without the other, guys. Not when you've had this done. The cigarette goes down really, really well. My wonderful, wonderful partner. She's been absolutely unbelievable. Looking after me, she really has. I couldn't, you know, couldn't wish for a better person in my life. I really couldn't. Um, so, yeah, that was Wednesday, guys. What is it now? I'm recording this. It's Saturday night, and I just wanted to get down here and do something because I'm getting a little bit fidgety on the sofa. I can't get comfortable. It's really difficult to get comfortable. I'm in no pain standing here right now, but if I move, I try and get into bed, try and sit down. In fact, the only pain I've got is the fact that this hand is starting to feel uh, pins and needles because of this. This is stopping a lot of the blood flow going through into my hands. I'm getting pins and needles, and actually that hand's really swollen. It's a lot bigger than my other hand. I think that's only because of the lack of blood flow, to be honest with you. They'll probably end up, in, end up cutting my hand off. <laughs> after all that so yeah you, your arm's fixed but you've stopped the blood flow into your hand we'll have to cut it off <laughs> anyway i'm counting my blessing guys and honestly i don't want any sympathy i really don't and i've got to thank everyone that gave me all those wonderful get well messages on my facebook i really appreciate guys and you know i appreciate from my subs too i do um i do i don't wish this on anyone it's it's horrible horrible thing to go for and obviously everyone's pain threshold is different from someone else's 
I feel like I've got a relatively high pain threshold, but I still get shocked that, you know, anyone would, right? Um, I think it's just because I knew exactly what happened. I think it, what worries for a lot of people, and me especially, is the unknown. Like I say, if you've got that virus, it's an unknown quantity. You don't know what route you're going to take with that illness. That's the worrying thing. With something that's broken, you know it's going to heal. It's just time. Time, that's all it is, time. And it's frustrating. It's frustrating. It's really frustrating. Especially you move in a new place. You want to do stuff, get on with things. But it's not the end of the world. There's loads of people a lot worse off than me. So I'm counting my blessing, guys. I really am. So don't, please don't give me any sympathy. But I'm taking you on this journey. You are my subscribers. So don't think you're going to get away with it. You are coming on this journey, journey, whether you like it or not. And, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, guys. going to do this place up. Maybe give you some ideas for your uh, games room, arcade, you know. Um, and you can give me some, too. See where we go. You know, I'm still not sure about the layout in here. So I've got all my cabs down one route here. And I was going to have it sort of cabs down halfway down on this side and halfway down that side. But I love seeing... All of them in a row like that it looks so cool then having my desk console area down that end and so a music setup where i can play stuff which would be cool but man this is the biggest games we've ever had i've got room for another three four cabs if i want to um, i don't want to ram it though guys but the, you know i've got cabs in mind um, maybe for next year and i've still got millipede to come here and i've got my little video master jammer cab to come here um so guys it's 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 nearly full now <laughs> you know but i don't want to ram <clears throat> i don't want to ram it full of stuff right now because i've got work to do and it's just gonna get covered in dust so here we are guys here we are um so what i'm gonna do now um is i'll just do a little i'll, I'll take hold of the camera show you around show you my cabs where i'm at show you the whole room and then we'll come back here and um well, that'd probably be it, really. <laughs> Until the next video, which will be, what we'll do in the next video is we'll unwrap some of these cabs, position them, and see what we can do with the room. Um, but I am a little bit limited in what I can do with this arm, so you have to bear with me. I wanted to upload videos more regularly, and I will do, but I am now limited with this, guys. I really am. I just can't do anything, lift anything, move anything. You know, the cat, the cat this morning loves affection comes up to me and brushes your hand but it brushed my broken arm here and it fucking hurts guys it really did hurt it's pushing my arm that way that's how painful it is that's how weak this arm is so it's gonna be six weeks seven weeks before this is uh back to normal but i've got time i've been locked down nothing else is happening anyway i hope you guys are all all right anyway um I've been seeing all the videos you've been uh, uploading, especially some of the other YouTubers like Scott. I know you wanted me to do a VR, Scott, and um, I just, I just can't, mate. I just, I've just about haven't got enough energy to do this video, to be honest with you, because I'm so drugged up with painkillers. But I will do it eventually, mate. I will do. I will get round to it. Um, but yeah, let's let's have a walk around the room with the camera and, and show you show you a little bit of the layout. I'm standing right down the end here by the double doors. You can see the length and width of the arcade. So I've got a jammer cab here. You can see there's a good space in between. So I could, if I really wanted to push this room, this space, I could probably get 21 cabs in here <laughs> if I wanted to. But I don't want to sacrifice my console area. I really want a console area to set up the Vectrex, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, PC Engine, and you know, do reviews of arcade ports to certain systems going forward on this channel. That's what I want to do. And loads more Nintendo pickups. I want to get back into that, collecting for the NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and all that kind of stuff. So this area down here, I'm gonna dedicate to consoles. Vectrex, and so it'd be like an L-shaped, and then where this mattress is, the cabs will start again, so I can get probably another five or six cabs on this row, um, 
so plenty of space and there you can see the door that will be blocked up and what i have at that end where the double doors are that would be the entrance in it's quite handy having double doors uh for getting cabs in and out to be honest with you so i'll block that door up there block these windows up have those as shelving space and have cabs from that wall up to probably in between where those windows are so it's a good area guys a really good area and you can see i've got nine cabs down this run here got me initial bits of moon alien prototype rescue astro blaster sheriff donkey kong jr sky skipper gorf robotron and wizard of war and i've got millipede and a video master to come yet yeah. And you know this was this is what I was trying to do the other night when I had my accident, set up the Mega Drive, just so I could play a few games. It's got an, an Ever Drive there, so I can literally play anything, and have the bed here. This is this is just overspill from the move, really. All this is going to go, um, but I was just going to sleep down here just for one night to give uh, my partner a bit of space because she's got a bad back. But all this is going to go, guys, and I can get a nice. Two rows either side of this space and have plenty of space in the middle for people to, to mingle, which is really, really cool. I absolutely love it, guys. I really, really do. Such an amazing space. Probably put a couple of neons above the cabs up there. Um, do have problems with power supplies, these big power supplies that you get to convert um, the voltage uh, up from the American... 110 to 240 um it's always an issue normally i have to have them on top of the cabs or I might create a little shelf above and have them on top there or if i can get them inside the cab i do that but i don't usually like leaving them inside the cab because sometimes you can forget that they're in there um you can see i've got golf unwrapped it's the only game i can play right now with one arm but it's really really cool really getting into it i love that golf such an iconic game from the 80s game i used to love playing back in the day and still love to this day um so yeah i've got a nice collections really coming together now i just want a few more games this side so maybe a sega hang on i'd love a paper boy i'd love a zookeeper um asteroids deluxe is definitely going to be on my list uh, to get um and maybe you know maybe a pinball um but i don't want to get a pinball just for pinball's sake you know because I really am at heart a vid guy. I'm not really a pin guy. Um, and I don't want to just get a pinball just for the sake of saying I own a pinball. Um, the pinballs I like, the expensive ones, you know, I wouldn't mind a Tron or um, Attack from Mars or Revenge from Mars, whatever it is, are pretty cool. But they're big bucks, guys. They're such big bucks. And I don't know, so much space as well. I'll have to see. For me, it's always been about the vids and the console games. Um, and I want to dedicate this area down here for all my console stuff, which is going to look so cool. Can't wait. Um, but yeah, really chuffed with it, guys. Obviously, it's got to be insulated. And then what I'll probably do is put a breathable membrane on top. I've got to get all the sockets, plug sockets above the cabs here. Loads of double sockets. Double sockets below where this settee is. And on this side as well. So, what a fantastic space. See, I've got already got electricity in here, but I don't want to overload it. I've got four sockets here. I've got a fuse box up there, which is handy. Um, it's nice and cool in here. I've got a space above here for storage for all my console stuff right now. And, um, yeah, I, I just, I've just seen my, all my cabs together like that. I've never had that. Seeing them all together in one row is just fantastic. Feels like a real arcade in here. It's really, really cool. Um, so there you go, guys. Obviously, yeah, the floor, the floor's concrete at the moment. I've got to put, um, what I'm going to do is put huge scaff scaffold boards down, screw them to the concrete and then varnish it. And I'll probably do that with the walls as well. So it gives it a nice log cabin, nice warm feeling, nice insulation as well, wood, and it stops the sound. So yeah, really, really cool. Well, that's it for this week, guys. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of work to be done. 
Um, I mean, it's not, nothing that I can't handle. It's, you know, the main structures here, it's just really, once all this furniture's out of here, and I've got my millipede in here and my other jammer cab, then I can get an idea of where everything's gonna go. Then I can get an electrician in, sort out where all the plugs are gonna go, insulate it, board it, put the floor down, job done. You know, and then the fun bit is obviously getting all the console games out, putting the shelves up, putting the artwork up, the neon lights, all that kind of stuff. That's the real fun bit I can't wait to do. But at least I can come down here, I can plug in a few games, and you know, I can do the videos, which is cool. You know, I've never had that before. It's, well, I, well, I have, but it's been awkward because the room that I had before was in the house. You know, when you've got um, people over or people want to watch TV, it's not always ideal to do a video. So I can come down here any time of the day, really late at night, and not worry about you know making a noise um, and having this space unbelievable space. The width, the length is just perfect, it really, really is. Uh, you know, I'm so chuffed. So expect loads of more videos from me going forward, guys. Um, especially with this, because I'm not going anywhere. It's just whether I've got the strength and the energy to do a video, because I'm still on loads of painkillers. Um, so that's it, guys. just want to say thanks again for all the well wishes and the people that have rang me up to see how I am. Thanks for that, guys. I really do appreciate it. But, you know, I'm not looking for any sympathy at all. I'd just rather you make... The, take the piss out of me uh, and make a funny comment about my arm to be honest with you um, I really appreciate that so guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next one take care guys